Well, yesterday was Thanksgiving. Hope you guys had an awesome Thanksgiving, got to enjoy some good food and quality time with friends and family. And most importantly, hope you had a chance to appreciate the positive things in life and everything that life has blessed you with. I know I definitely soaked this year in. This last year has brought a lot of good things for me health-wise and family. So definitely enjoy this one. And now that Thanksgiving has come and gone, you guys know what this weekend means. It is Black Friday craziness and I am bringing the heat with Prime this year. The business that I run got tons of stuff to give away, a bunch of cash to throw in with each order and a giveaway on a fathead racing cylinder head. So if you've been wanting to try out the abrasive wheels that you see throughout the videos or maybe grab some parts to freshen up your bike or maybe some tools, there's actually a lot on the store these days. Now is your chance. I don't really run deals like this throughout the rest of the year only on Black Friday when I really ramp it up. So let's head upstairs and check out these prime time deals. How about we start out with the product giveaways first. Got tons of t-shirts to blow out, all sorts of different sizes, colors, and designs. Got some tank tops, hoodies, hoodies, more hoodies, shorts, polishing compounds if you wanna make your parts look like chrome. All those are going. And then on this side, let's see, you got some JIS screwdrivers, some small flap wheels, small cleaning wheels, more bench grinder cleaning wheels, bench grinder flap wheels. Also found these jet tags. I actually never sold these on the store. Just have a bin of them. Gonna give those away too. Oh, and then back in the corner, got a bunch of thick rubber work gloves. Those things are awesome for working on bikes. Also have some polishing wheels to go along with those polishing compounds. Now a heads up on these product giveaways. Some of them do have defects, which is why they're on the free page. For example, polishing compounds might have a little crack, which does not affect the function of them at all, or a little chip corner. All the apparel is perfect, no defects there. Let's see, screwdrivers, those are perfect. No issues with them. Flap wheels might have something cosmetic like that cleaning wheels maybe a little wobble on the machine or something that's a little cosmetic as well same with the flap wheels the stamping is kind of weird on some of these but that does not affect the function at all so i thought i'd just give you a heads up on that stuff so you want to head to the website primemx.com i'll have it linked down below click on prime time deals this is where all the craziness is happening there's probably 20 or 30 different deals here. Even got a few combo packs. So you'll notice all of these items are free with orders over a certain amount for ranging from 15, 20, 25, 40, 50, all the way up to, I believe it's 200. And what you're gonna wanna do to get one of these free items is add it to the shopping cart and you must have it in the shopping cart with your order in order to receive it. There are no exceptions there. And then go browse the store add some more items so that way your order total matches the amount in the title here or higher so to give you some ideas there's a bunch of abrasive wheels cleaning wheels flap wheels polishing wheels a bunch of wheel accessories as well or some parts if you want to update the front end of your bike or just giving it a freshen up with some bearing seals bushings brake parts you name it there's a bunch of stuff here even some tools, those JIS screwdrivers are really nice for Japanese bikes. There's a ton of stuff on this store, so don't be afraid to browse. I'm also gonna be giving away a load of cash throughout the orders too. Hopefully that helps offset that wonderful Joe Biden inflation. So no need to do anything special while you're ordering. Just place your order through the store and you will receive a bill. I've got bills ranging from ones, fives, tens, twenties. Oh, I saw a hundred in there, another hundred. It's all random, you never know what you're gonna get. And then as far as that fat head giveaway, I'm gonna show you how that works. Now when you're ready to check out, you'll be in the shopping cart. So scroll down to the order notes and type in P-H-A-T and that will enter you into that fat head giveaway. And if you win, it'll be your choice of any two stroke head that fat head offers. Let's take a moment and just admire how beautiful these fat heads are. Oh gosh, Luke does such a good job with these things. Now, if you want in on these deals, I will have the link to the Primetime Deals page in the description below. The first link will take you over there. 
These deals only last today, tomorrow, and Sunday. So as a 25th, 26th, and 27th of November. And in years past, a lot of the product has gone within the first day. So this year, don't get caught with your pants down because you'll have to wait till next year. So we're at the point in this project to where it's a bunch of small stuff, things like cables, controls, wiring, levers, that kind of thing. Stuff that's kind of boring, but if you take your time with it and approach it the right way, can really make a big difference in the end result. So why don't we jump into it? I think there's gonna be some things that you guys can take from this one and apply it to your build. So let's get to it. First item on our hit list today is the shifter. You can see the stock tip is all worn down. Picked up a nice billet one from Tusk. I'm gonna see if I can adapt that. It looks pretty close. Probably gonna have to do some modification here though. Now to get this old tip off of here, I'm gonna have to drill out the rivet. Looks like we'll be able to just punch this pin right out. Now let's hope this new tip will line up. Yeah, we're maybe a 16th inch short right there. So I ground down the shifter enough for the tip to fit. Yeah, she's a little floppy. Let's throw this on the bike and see if the shifter would actually be in the right position. Uh, she's looking a little, little off. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Damn it. That shifter. So as you can see, this pin is pretty loose. It's quite a bit smaller than the original pin. So I found a larger pin. I just gotta drill out the tip so it can fit through and I think that'll tighten it up. This shifter is bent. It's not straight from the tip to the mounting hole. So. I'm gonna have to call 1-800-GET-BENT and fix this thing. This is way more fun than buying a new shifter. Oh, we're in business. We are in business. Yeah, basically this needs to be perpendicular with the engine. Oh, dude, we're down to like the degree. So this is actually a foot peg pin, but I'm gonna have to drill a little hole for a cotter pin. Got this sweet little spring tool. See how she all goes together. Nice. So somehow this tip ended up working out just fine. I spent way too much time on it, but I'm gonna have to sand out some of these scratches on the shifter. So let's Take this thing back apart and bring it into the grinding room and have some fun with it. So we've got a couple scrapes right here to knock out. Now I'm just gonna finish this off with the fine wheel here. Give it a nice brush look. Shifter just turned out beautifully, like always, nice and smooth. Now before I put this together, I'm gonna have to do something with the pin and spring. They're not looking too pretty. So I don't have my zinc plating set up. That would be the right way to do it is to zinc these. So I am just going to actually Cerakote them and kind of match them to the tip here. I think that would look pretty good. There's a few other things I need to Cerakote in today's video as well. We've got the throttle housing as well as the chain guide. So I might as well do it all in one batch here. I know you guys are probably tired of watching me buff out parts in every video, but we can't leave this stuff looking all haggard like that. And honestly, whether I'm filming or not, I spend a lot of time in that, that grinding room uh, buffing them out. Can't really even tell these parts were as hammered as they were. They smoothed out really nicely. Now it's time to sandblast these. I'll be using 100 grit aluminum oxide. So 
after all of our prep work is done, sandblasting, acetone bath, and a heat treat through the oven. And so we're gonna spray this stuff out. I'll be using Cerakote Graphite Black for this. And as you guys can imagine, whenever you're doing any type of painting, grinding, I would recommend wearing, at the bare minimum, glasses, respirator. I go pretty hardcore, I wear the full suit, obviously gloves, PAPR respirator. Um, I've had health issues as a result of this kind of work. So I protect myself to the max and I would recommend you guys do the same. Parts turned out pretty solid, so now we can get this shifter back together. Shifter is all done. Six or nine hours later, I have way too much time in this. It probably would have been more uh, beneficial just to go spend the 25 bucks on a new shifter, but it was a fun little challenge, and man, that thing is nice and tight. Put a little anti-seize on the splines, and we're gonna line up the tip level with the foot peg. Right about there is good. Next up is the chain guide. Got a new chain block for it. Black on black. Now this wasn't my finest work with the chain guide. You can see some of those scratches from sanding are still visible. I really should have hit it with like 320 grit afterwards, after the 180. Now we're gonna pop this throttle back together. Gotta to figure out what to do with the little plastic cover here. I think I'm gonna glass bead that, get kind of a matte finish out of it. So recently I found that medium grade glass bead works really good on plastic. Kind of gives it a smooth matte finish. So I'm blasting this at about 80 PSI. So it definitely doesn't have any shine to it, but if you're going for that flat look, Glass bead is definitely the way to go. So for a throttle tube, I'll be using a ODI tube that's already integrated with the grip. This is from the lock-on system. Love how these things work. And then I have a Pro-X throttle cable. Before we get going with assembly, I'll need to lube up this cable. These don't come pre-lubed. So always a good idea to throw some lube on them. And a lube it, I have this Motion Pro, I believe it is called the V2 or V3 cable lube tool. So you slide the bigger end on first, slide on the rubber grommet, and that will seal to the cable. Thread on the other end. So basically you wanna tighten these two housings until the cable is tight in the grommet. We're gonna make sure this pipe is extended out. Stick the straw in the hole. And so the goal is to squirt lube all the way through the cable till it comes out the other end. That sounds like a volcano. Oh, there she goes. And then to finish her off, just push down the plunger and that'll squirt all the rest of the lube in there. Oh yeah, she's squirting. How about we get started by popping in the cable to the throttle housing. Oh, we got more lube coming. I always like to grease up the wheel. Basically anything that spins, I want the freaking smoothest, snappiest throttle in the game. So this ODI lock-on system comes with a bunch of different throttle cams. I see the four-stroke ones here. We're gonna throw those out. And we've got the two-stroke ones. Let's figure out which one is gonna work for this. Yeah, it looks like that'll work fine. Curious if the other cam will work as well. 
Yeah, that works too. It's a shorter throw actually. Probably what, a quarter turn? So I think I'm gonna wanna go with the cam that has the longer throw on it. Yeah, that's more like half turn. And we'll go with that. Something else I like to do here is put some grease on the side and on the ramp. And we are good to go. I don't know if I like that dull cover though. I might want to do some trim coat on that to kind of brighten it up. It looks like a sun faded piece of plastic. So one thing you never want to grease is your handlebar here. If you put grease inside of here and that attracts dirt, then you're going to have a really crunchy throttle. So push the throttle all the way on, back it off just a hair, maybe like an eighth or a quarter inch. That way the end of the throttle tube is not hitting on the handlebar. And then for cable routing, it is gonna go through the left side of the forks. We need to find the path that is the straightest and isn't gonna catch or bind on anything. Probably go just to there. That looks like it'll tuck in nicely. Gonna have to remove the throttle cap to get that cable installed. I feel like a damn surgeon getting this slide out of here. Look at that, freaking got it. Nice. Now I'm missing the rubber boot that's supposed to go over this. I'll have to buy one later. So we're just gonna compress the spring and then just put the cable end alongside that groove and it'll kind of lock in just like that. Make sure you have the plastic retainer on there. That'll keep the cable in place. You might have to spin that little plastic retainer around. You can see it only fits one way down into that groove and back into the carburetor we go. Before we get too carried away, I'm gonna test the throttle. You guys ready for this? I think it's gonna be pretty smooth. Oh, that's my favorite thing about two strokes is that snap back. Let's freaking get some, bro. I'm also gonna do some cable adjustment here. A Little bit of play there. I wanna tighten that up just a hair. You don't want it too tight though. If there's not enough slack in the cable. You could accidentally whiskey throttle. It's nice to have a little bit of give there. That's a dreamy throttle right there. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna bust out the SC1, see what that does on the throttle cap. Hey, that actually looks like a freaking brand new cap. You know how they kind of have that matte finish? Let's throw this other grip on. Sometimes these can be pretty tough over the knurling on the handlebar. And this is the best part about these grips. They just literally bolt on, no glue, no wire. Got a new clutch lever for this thing. Got a pro taper, what do they call it, a profile. So I'm actually gonna pull this apart and grease up the pivot, make it that much smoother. Oh, nice, it's even got a bearing in there. That is a good lever for the money. I think it was only like 60 or $70. It's a really solid setup. So just like the throttle, basically anything that moves, put a little layer of grease on it. Pull this cable adjuster off and see if that needs some lube as well. So usually on these adjusters, I won't grease the threads because that can attract some dirt. However, on the perch, right here where the adjuster rides, that is where you want grease because that's basically where that adjuster spins on. Yeah, that's smooth. Dude, I am losing it. Why did I put this thing back together? I gotta put the freaking cable on. Little plastic sleeve. Helps the lever rotate when you lay the bike down. And of course, if we want a buttery smooth clutch, we're gonna need a new cable on here. We've got a Pro X cable. Of course, we gotta throw some lube on this as well. All right, let's freaking go. <laughs> I can beat it. Dude. Amping myself up for fucking cable lubing. There she blows. Damn. Whoa. <laughs> so uh, pop on the cable. The flywheel cover is gonna have to come off. See how the flywheel and stator are fairing inside of there. Well, oh, yeah, still looking brand new. Gotta wipe this cable down. It's freaking slimier than Craigslist personals. So the routing is gonna go up through the right side of the fork. So I'm 
sometimes these clutch lever boots can be really tough to get on onto the lever, get it into the adjuster. So if you're tightening the pivot bolt and it stops like that before it seats, you need to loosen it up a little bit, kind of move the lever around. There we go. Get it through, tighten down that pivot bolt, make sure that still moves smoothly. And then same thing on the nut. Snug it down, but not over tighten to the point where it tightens up the lever. Let's set our cable slack. You can also fine tune it with the adjuster on the cable. Let's back this adjuster out a little bit so that way our Cable adjuster on the lever isn't maxed out. You don't want to run this too far out because then you don't have enough play to compensate for clutch wear. So we're going to give this a few turns, tighten the lock nut so that stays in place. Now cable slack is super important. If you run it too tight, you risk burning up your clutch plates. If it's too loose, you don't really have good control over the clutch. And so how I normally set the cable slack is by looking at the gap between the perch and the lever. Let me pull the boot off and show you guys. I usually go the width of a coin or like a quarter in between the perch and the lever. So let's tighten that up just a hair, maybe two clicks. One more is good. Now you can run it looser if you prefer. Something like that, that is still gonna allow for a good clutch action. It'll bring the lever a little closer to the handlebars. So a lot of this boils down to personal preference, but you definitely don't wanna run it tight like this. So basically I'm pulling outward on the cable and there's no slack there. That is completely tight. That'll burn up your clutch plates in just a matter of hours. So you wanna check over a few things when you're done with your cables, mostly when you turn the handlebars, make sure it is not binding anywhere. Make sure it's not pulling out of the lever Notice the clutch cable is a little tight here when it's at full turn. It's not pulling out of the lever, so I think it's fine. You also wanna make sure the cables do not smash between the triple clamp stops, the steering stops. That will pinch a cable in a hurry. Obviously, we can address that later with some zip ties or cable ties. Another thing to look for too is cables chafing on sharp edges. All these edges up here are pretty smooth. Now, I do see this being a problem right here on the motor mount that might chafe over time. So I might knock a little edge off on the back of the motor mount. This is just nitpicking and trying to make the cables last as long as possible. Now to get the smoothest possible cable action, you want to have the cable as straight as possible. So the cable is going to be right about there. When you turn the handlebars, it looks like it stays pretty straight. And then as we come down to the engine, it looks like a pretty straight shot. Now this is the ultimate test. If you can one finger a clutch, yeah, that is really smooth. It definitely pays off to have that cable lubed as best as you can, as well as a lever. And like I mentioned, having that cable as straight as possible. Now there's a few more adjustments we can make on this clutch lever. A lot of aftermarket levers have adjustments on the wheel. If you tighten down these Allen screws here, there's usually two of them. That will actually make the wheel harder to spin. A little bit more resistance there. So you can kind of fine tune that to your liking. So this lever also has the cable reach adjustment. As we turn in this Allen screw, you can see it is bringing the lever closer to the handlebars. So that's something I'll probably fine tune later. So the lever position on the handlebars is something you can adjust as well. This is kind of personal preference too, but I don't run the lever past the handlebar when it's pulled all the way in. Something about like that's good. Put my hand on the grip and right where my finger lands, on that pivot is where I like it. So as far as the lever height, I usually go until it is a straight line from my finger all the way up to my elbow. If it's way down like that, that's really hard to get a good angle on it. If it's to the moon, your wrist is at a weird angle and just doesn't really work well. So usually that's a good baseline for most people. I'll just snug it up, make sure it still has movement. It needs to be able to move on the handlebar in case you dump the bike. So moving right along, we've got a new kill switch to install. These ones from Tusk are pretty sweet looking, but we're gonna have to splice in the existing harness here. Well, I'm gonna sacrifice this old kill switch and nip the plug off of it. 
need to clip the ends off of the test kill switch as well. Strip the insulation off the end of the wire. Then we've got some butt connectors here. And before you make the connection, you wanna have a piece of heat shrink over the kill switch wire. Since it doesn't matter which wire goes where, they can be either way, because basically how a kill switch works is when you press the button, cuts the circuit and kills the engine. So it doesn't really matter which one goes where. Slide the connector on just until it goes into the insulation. Give it a crimp. Give it a pull. Oh yeah, that's not very solid. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to try that one again. All right, I can trust that one now. That is not, not going anywhere. It's kind of like when you're tying down stuff on your trailer or in your bed of your truck. You have to say, that ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna give her a little zap with a heat gun and we will be good to go. So what I like about these kill switches is they mount directly onto your front master cylinder or you can put it on the clutch lever, whatever you prefer. Some people run it on this side, some people run it on the other. Personally, I run it on the throttle side and my reasoning is that when you are riding, you're more likely to take your left hand off the handlebar, say if you're going over a jump and you pull a tear off or you're readjusting your helmet or goggles, you're gonna pull your left hand off and not your right hand. If you pull your hand off, you're more likely to hit that kill switch. And if you kill the bike in the air, when you land, it is not gonna be good. You're probably gonna rack your family jewels. And it makes more sense to me to put it right here. So usually you'd put a sleeve in here like there is one on the clutch perch. I don't have one for this. I'm gonna have to go find one. So let's just bolt this up for now. Leave it a little bit loose so that way it can rotate on the handlebars. That's a little too loose. Now for the routing of the wiring, I'm gonna go behind the handlebar. That way with roost and rocks, this doesn't get impacted. And go down through here. Now this is getting really technical, but how you layer the cables also matters too. So front brake line always goes on top. That goes on the outside of the number plate, of course. Throttle cable comes next. The reason for that is you want the throttle cable to be free as possible and not held up by the clutch cable or the kill switch. That way it can't be possibly pulled out of the throttle. Clutch cable next and then kill switch at the bottom. So like I was saying at the beginning of the video, it really pays to spend the time on your cockpit here. And if you can really dial things in, you'll have a nice smooth clutch, one finger clutch, snappy throttle. And this setup just looks clean. I like how the kill switch takes a lot of just unnecessary mess off the cockpit here. And the next thing we've got going on here is the wiring harness. It's a pretty simple deal. CDI box, coil, and this bike actually has a uh, rectum, rectum rectifier. Well, let's give these things a little cleanup if I can get my glove on, right? Now people will say you can't clean electronics in water or degreaser. I say they're full of it. I've done it a million times. You have to imagine like pressure washing this stuff when it's on the bike. That is a lot more water PSI going into these connections. So don't worry about it. Just obviously don't sit there and scrub on your pins there. And of course, it's absolutely essential you blow out the connections after washing them with water. Not really sure what happened to the CDI box. Looks like someone got hungry and decided to start chewing on it. Kind of got the same thing going on on the coil too. Coil needs a little buff job. Pretty primo. So after cleaning up this wiring harness, it's pretty hammered. Some of the connections are busted. There's a bunch of exposed wires. I don't know if I'm comfortable running this one. I might just put it on for temporary, but I'm gonna be on the lookout for a new harness for a 2001, as well as the CDI box mount that goes rivets onto the air box right here. This one's missing. I need that as well. Get a new CDI box too. Looks like this one is so worn down. There's a little bit of rubber exposed right here. We'll start with the ignition coil. 
and the rectum on fire. Gonna bolt up just like that. We're just gonna get this harness in there temporarily. I'm pretty stiffed on this one. I don't know what's going on here. We got two plugs that come from the carburetor, a kill switch. There's no plugs left besides the CDI. That goes into the airbox. And we've got the rectum on fire plug here just chilling. There's no plug in for it. Yeah, I think this is the wrong harness. It's gotta be. So it turns out I had a 2002 RM harness on this 01. I was able to find an 01 harness. As you can see, it has more plugs here compared to this one. So this harness will work, but it is broken as well. The CDI box plug is busted and I don't want to run it that way if it actually unplugs while in use. Probably wouldn't be good. So I'm gonna to have to find another harness, but I was able to locate a 2001 CDI. You can see they use a different plug here. And this one is in a lot better shape. So at least we have a good CDI now. Just gotta find a harness before we can move forward. So that's gonna to have to be the stopping point for the build today. I was really hoping to get the electrical system all buttoned up, but now I'm gonna to have to go scrounge on eBay for some more parts. So hopefully you found something throughout this video that you can apply to your builds. If you did, please write me a comment down below and let me know what you found helpful. And as always, thank you for supporting the channel and thank you for checking out the video. I will see you in the next episode of this build. We're gonna be finishing up the electrical system, bolting on a few more parts, and fixing some of the mistakes I made throughout this project. They're kinda of eating me alive. So anyways, I am absolutely shot. My eyes can barely stay open at this point. So I'm gonna get some rest, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.